unlock. Lock in place. Adjust. Okay, so this is uh, with the Weber seat on here. Just moving it back and forth into its J-rail position. Engage the lock in place. Okay, here's the uh, finished J-rail assembly. Just doing a little walk around here. Basically three sections, the lower plate, the J-rail brackets themselves, and the upper plate which the seat attaches to. This is a detail of the bearing slider unit for the J-Rail system. It consists of uh, two parts. One is a uh, conveyor bearing assembly, about a medium size. Uh, this is a, uh, the bearing here, rides in a housing with ball bearings in it. Of course, this gets flipped upside down. Then the load of the uh, seat and passenger, or co-pilot pilot, are uh, actually placed on this bearing surface and ride within the J-Rail system. Uh, this particular housing here provides the constraint within the J-rail uh, confines so that it stays uh, put and has a very slight uh, play in it to allow the rail to go back and forth uh, uh, forward reverse as well as slide uh, in its J form. This is the actual uh, conveyor be bearing. It's a typical low-cost conveyor belling, bearing. Uh, these bearings are uh, fairly bulletproof. They're very uh, uh, tolerant of dust and dirt, and uh, that's why I chose this uh, approach for the slider bearing assembly. Uh, while the uh, top plate is upside down, I'll show you the, uh, the actual pin retaining system. Uh, this is a block that rides with the uh, upper platform. Uh, and it's fixed such that when you pull down on the, uh, the lever, and this is upside down right now, uh, the pin retracts and you can slide it to different positions on the J-rail. And I'll show that uh, in a different segment here. In any case, uh, this helps to restrain the uh, seat in a given position with minimal play for the seat. In practice, uh, you just you just don't even know that uh, it's constrained, but it does provide the uh, the fix that you need to uh, keep the seat in one position. This is uh, sort of a close-up look of the the J-rail system on the base plate. So there are uh, four of these J-rail uh, assemblies that allow constraint for the uh, the roller bearing, which ties into the top plate. This allows the, the plate essentially, uh, which supports the seat, to slide back and over. And this is a reverse uh, image of this for the uh, first officer side. This is the uh, cap captain side. Uh, this system is uh, open. I decided that it would be better for, uh, for dust evacuation and cleaning and so on. So uh, these rails on top here are supported by uh, half-inch nylon spacers. This provides a little bit of an elastomeric approach as well as a uh, very solid uh, positioning of the J-rail. This is all laid out on uh, CAD CAM so the position of these J-rails are very accurate. Nonetheless getting alignment for the J-rail is uh, fairly difficult as it turns out. Now the J-rail bearings which attach to the upper platform that the seat attaches to are actually uh, riding in this channel here. You can see the uh, track of the bearing itself. This is adequate to support uh, 
this load, about 250 pounds per bearing. Uh, in addition, there is a puck that goes in and it floats and rides with the actual bearing assembly so the upper plate that the seat is attached to uh, actually moves uh, back and forth and this puck rides with it. It turns out uh, that it's uh, a good idea because it acts as a dust uh, wiper it also provides some lateral stability uh, for the, the bearing support. So a real close tolerance fit there but essentially allowing for uh, uh, dust, uh, a dust wipe, if you will, so that the bearing stays as clean as possible. These uh, conveyor bearings uh, are typically able to run dry, and so really there's no maintenance or lubrication required in this system. There are four pucks per, uh, per rail. So here you see each uh, rail for the entire J-Rail assembly has one of these pucks uh, installed. The next will be to uh, place the upper platform onto uh, the opening for the J-Rail. Now this is a little wider area here so you can actually lower it down onto the assembly and then it will begin to uh, be uh, able to slide back and forth. A locking mechanism. This is the upper uh, J-rail plate that the seat actually bolts onto. These holes are drilled for a Weber seat. This would uh, take an Ipico or anything else. In any case, um, the J-rail alignment is uh, real critical, uh, no matter how precise you end up making the parts. Uh, the bearing uh, assemblies are fixed on this side, one side, and then these uh, bearings, uh, that are attached to the right side of the J-rail are actually floating somewhat. They're on uh, rubber uh, washers and they're seated just so that there's just a little bit of play in there. What that allows for is a real smooth movement of the, the J-rail system. So with um, the seat on there and um, what, like a 300 pound passenger or uh, uh, pilot, uh, this moves very smoothly. Now the locking mechanism for the seat is in these uh, pin locations here. It provides about uh, 11 inches of travel uh, fore aft so that you can uh, position the upper J-rail platform, uh, therefore the seat at whatever location you want. Uh, this is a, um, a locking system and so when it gets to a pin location it drops down and when you want to uh, change locations, you pull up, and then you can move the seat. Lift up, lock in place, and you're in a new location. This simply just, uh, let's see if I can demo here. Pull up, twist over, it sits on top of the cap screws. You can then move the J-rail to a new location. Bring it back down, locks in place. So, real simple system and uh, easy to access from the seat location actually. Works great.